And we are back. With us is Mr. Chris Sananu. He is the Managing Director of the Enterprise Division at Telcom Kenya. Chris, welcome to the show. Thank you. Tell us, what does Enterprise Division at, the Telco, at Telcom Kenya actually mean and what do you do? Well, um, Enterprise just really refers to anything that's non-consumer. So some of my competitors might call it business markets. But if you look at the globally, if you go to the US or the UK, anything that's non-consumer, nothing, something that's not really um, a personal relationship with a telco, then it goes to the business or the enterprise. Okay. So that's what we do. All right. Yeah. So what, would, what are your typical products or services? Well, so for a TV station like yourself, we would give you broadband services or connectivity between here and a data center. Uh, we could also give you platforms that you put your apps on, hosting services, co-locating services, okay. cloud services. Oh, wow. Yeah. And all of this you provide locally? 100% locally. So okay. most of the data storage or co-location, yes, would be local. Okay. Yeah. So when you're providing the broadband, I suppose that you're tapping into the infrastructure that's already there. 100% okay. we'll be using the fiber infrastructure, the wireless infrastructure, and also the GSM infrastructure. Okay. Yeah. So the, there's been a lot of uh, investments from the, from the government with regards to Vision 2030 and looking at technology as an enabler. What's your sense of the kind of infrastructure spending that has been done? Has that been valuable, especially for you as a practitioner? 100% no, no spend in ICT for government is a waste. Okay. Unless, of course, they pay too much for it. All right. Um, but, I mean, Kenya is on a path towards fully digitizing government to make sure that it, we enable um, the citizens in their engagement or uh, interaction with the government. Most of it is digital. Okay. Obviously, there's a lot of um, value to that because the first value I could say is lowering of corruption because when transactions can be traceable, it means that people find less gaps to seek rent. That's true. Unless, of course, somebody interferes with the way the systems work. Like when I try to pay for my pay, a parking fee sometimes, the system doesn't work. Yes. So then I have to look for somebody and pay them. Yes. Okay. So if, if the system is down, then obviously then you have a bit of a challenge. But, I mean, there's a lot of ways to put uh, triple, double and triple redundancies okay. to ensure wow. that you don't have a system like that fail. Okay. Um, but back to infrastructure. So in the beginning, I think uh, 20 years ago, infrastructure was lacking. So there was quite a lot of fight to see who's the first to do the dig of the metropolitan fibers, of the national um, fiber uh, backbones. But now there's a lot of infrastructure in Kenya. We okay. have over six companies who have infrastructure in the ground. Liquid Telecom, Internet Solutions, Safaricom, Telcom. Uh, Jami Telcom, Zuku, and so infrastructure-wise, fiber-wise, we've got a lot of fiber, especially okay. in the major cities. And then the government has a lot of um, uh, investments in the national fiber optic backbone, okay. which then connects the different cities. And so with our four international cables which land in Mombasa, we're able to backhaul that capacity back into Nairobi and the rest of the towns, and the whole country can have good broadband. Okay. So none of that has gone to waste. All right. In fact, if this end, the question would be, how are we monetizing it? Actually, how that's what we, I was about to ask. How are we ensuring <laughs> yes. that we get a payback for this? Exactly. And um, different companies, obviously, will use different strategies. Um, but for us, as Telcom specifically, I mean, being the mother of telecommunication in Kenya and having the, 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 the widest reach of national um, infrastructure, we are doing a lot with the counties. Okay. We do a lot of the, with the county governments because um, you'd realize that th we are in the second term of devolution. In the first term, the counties were trying to figure out what is this power we have. And now that they've settled, the governors are doing, they want to do a lot to curb rural urban migration, <clears throat> to make sure that the youth in the counties can stay in the counties. And one of the most critical things that has happened over the years is as the internet grew, then the whole idea of the gig economy, that's the economy that you can yes, find. Yes, the gig economy. That, that has become very important. Okay. And actually, for most of the governors, if they can do a lot to build up um, internet broadband connectivity and Wi-Fi for themselves in the county, then it means the youth can find jobs online okay. and be employed in their locale. They don't have to come to the big to cities, have big okay. rent, have big transport problems. They can actually... 
they okay. can they can they can make themselves useful yes. in their their locations and actually get paid for it. Okay. So two questions on what you've said. Number one, when you're talking about utilization, I, are we are we in a space of excess capacity, and are there plans to actually an, increase this capacity if it's already in an excess situation? You, you need to look at it. There's three three sections of it. Okay. International fiber coming to Mombasa. We have enough capacity for the country, and even some of our neighboring countries pull from us. Mm -hmm. Then you have uh, um, national fiber. We have good enough coverage, probably about 78% of the country has fiber and going towards critical places. And then you have last, last mile. Okay. So the challenge is typically on the last mile. And this is um, what you would typically see in your house, like Zuku? Exactly. And, right. How does it get to your house? How okay. does it get to your office? All right. So about a month ago, we launched uh, what you call a CIH, a Community Information Hub Center mm -hmm. in Imbere. Oh, wow. Which is, um, I believe, Embu, you know, yes. a, a bit a bit in interior of Embu. And the youth over there were telling us how that center has become... The, the center of their activity. Amazing. You know, and that's where they've been able to, you know, come together, collaborate as youth, do get jobs from outside the country, online jobs, which they collaborate, they do. And one actual uh, youth uh, over there, gentleman, just said, look, here's my account. He logged in and he made $6,200 in a, in, a, in a span of three months. What was he doing? Um, doing transcriptions. Oh, is it? So sometimes you have a movie wow. and then they want the Swahili version and so they do transcriptions. Wow. They also do uh, a couple of um, translations, okay. English to Swahili, Swahili okay. to English. And uh, some of them do accounting work. You know, people s send their staff to just do the filing of, oh, wow. um, of accounting work. That's so very exciting. There's a lot of, there's a lot of online jobs in so the, I, the gig economy. Okay. On this gig economy, so what you have done with the CIH, is this something that you're going to replicate in other centers? 100%. So All CIH right. um, is uh, 290 constituencies. Uh, and each, and th that's the number of MPs, and each one of them has the ability to have four constituency hubs. Okay. So over a thousand constituency hubs are supposed to be delivered across the country, and we are Stelcom Enterprise are the ones at the forefront of executing this strategy. Okay. It's actually a strategy from the Ministry of ICT. Wow, yeah. I like that. Let's come back to the gig economy. Outside of just this basic um, opportunities with uh, regards to transcribing and accounting, certainly the innovation and the investment that the government has made in um, in digitizing. Um, the, a, a large part of our lives is certainly going to be beneficial. When you're talking about the gig economy and we are discussing layoffs in, in certain companies and the way work has been redefined, workflows have been redefined, what are the key opportunities that you see when you're talking about uh, the gig economy? So there's the other part of gig economy where you have uh, people who are creating um, apps and creating platforms which then uh, both the government and the private sector can use to become more efficient and, and, and effective at doing what they're doing. So that's another main area, and maintaining these systems. Okay. So as the government digitizes, there is a need for maintenance. So for example, in your case, when you're saying, I want to play my parking, and something goes wrong, and yes. I have to look for somebody, we need to have people behind these systems to make sure that they ensure the uptime of these services. Okay. So there's a lot of the jobs that exist today did not exist 15 years ago. Okay. And if you went to school, then you would not have been trained for this. I know. So a lot of these gig economy jobs are to support the, the systems, the platforms, the services that have all gone online. Okay. Yeah. And how does this um, how does this actually come into effect when you're looking at the macroeconomy? Because I can already see productivity gains and revenue streams out of the non-traditional um, areas that are coming in. When you're looking at the economy, then how do you look at technology and the potential money impact on the economy as a whole? Now, um, or is that a very broad question? No, it, it's good. <laughs> it's broad, but uh, so yesterday or sometime this week, there was an article that said um, Safari can put 680 billion into the economy. Mm -hmm. um, I hope the number I've, I've quoted is correct. Now, okay. that's just one entity. So you can just imagine as technology companies grow, the, um, the impact we're going to have. So te technology was not mainstream. That's true. 15, 15 years ago. But now you can't do without it. That's very every, true. Every business, every working business needs to communicate. And the main way of communication 
is email. Okay. You know, and so therefore. And WhatsApp. Okay, fine. That's yes, on and the other WhatsApp. One hundred percent. Actually, <laughs> seventy to eighty percent of my communication is WhatsApp, both uh, official and non unofficial. That's right. It's very effective. Like because I find you do more things on WhatsApp than confirmed. More things, more faster, and with the clarity of the confirmation. Exactly. You get it. Exactly. Um, wow. So, so the, the effect has been, the, the effect is twofold: cost reduction to most traditional businesses and then effectiveness going up okay and then the ability to trace because in the digital world there's an imprint of everything you do gone are the days you say i sent a fax oh you didn't get it but on my side it it, it, it said it had said <laughs> okay you get so it transparency. so the transparency and okay. accountability i like that transparency so we already have three things transparency accountability and less corruption less largely corruption. because exactly. of technology exactly okay fine i want to just get us back when you're talking about policy and regulation because today we don't we don't have very many players and when you're looking at the players the the profitability and um, the allocation of resources and appropriation of value from this resource sources it's it's quite divergent but then when you look at the region it's it looks like it's a bit unified in one way or the other what I'm trying to get at is there is a blueprint for where we want to get to with all the inf investments that are being made especially at a national level do you feel like we have the right business environment to actually open up our borders to global players to come and quickly ramp us up to 5g or to the next technology um, that actually comes into the market okay let me let me start by talking about when you say there are not too many players. Okay. It depends on which section of the market. That, that's a good point, actually. Because actually, that's a very good point. Because <laughs> I, I, think I think sometimes we don't... I shot myself in the foot. I was <laughs> talking about voice. Okay, voice. All <laughs> yes. right. Well, so, 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 but just to give some background. Okay. Um, you have tier one, tier two, and tier three. Yes. And on tier one, yes, it's just two to three players there, then tier two have enough the, the challenge used to be infrastructure okay. and like i mentioned before so that's no longer a challenge exactly so what's the greatest challenge then when you're looking at tier one tier two and tier three well i think actually the market is shifting and the people who are going to become more important are actually the value-added services and what you call ott on the o o over the top players okay the people who put platforms on top of on top of the telco infrastructure that's where the activity is so whatsapp is an OTT and today uh, nine out of ten people you meet will have WhatsApp and they, they, exactly. they, they use it that WhatsApp is embedded on the phone as an app and it uses the data that the person has subscribed for or Wi-Fi okay so you realize that actually uh, to your future question voice is becoming less important very true data is what is critical and that's why you've seen, um, since we rebranded as Telcom, mm. we become a darling of the youth okay. and the gig economy. Oh, is Be it? Yes, because our data packages and our data reliability okay. and our data speeds are very good. Okay. Voice. What's, what's the sense of pricing? So why is the attraction coming from the youth? The, the, the youth, because the youth want convenience. Okay. Uh, they want transparency in what they bought, how it is spent, how okay. the data is going. And, uh, and and they want to cost a good uh, competitive uh, price. Okay, Again. and that's actually now giving you numbers. And that's what's giving us numbers. Okay. Um, so 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 data is more critical than voice. But in voice, yes, voice players. You trip uh, right now. You have four: um, Jamie Telecom, you have Safaricom, you have Airtel, and okay. you have Telcom. All right. So you have only four voice players. But data, yes, because of Wi-Fi and broadband connectivity, you have a plethora of players now in the market. So it's highly fragmented. Highly fragmented, uh, but also tiered. Okay. So there are those with infrastructure and who have the capacity straight from the international cables. Would that and be telecom? That would be telecom. That All would right. be Safaricom. Okay. That would be Liquid. All right. But then you have others who buy off us and resell. Okay. A lot of them, virtual ISPs and, mm -hmm. and ISPs. And then you have the cyber cafe owners still exist. Oh, they do? Yes, they do. <laughs> wow. Because some Where? people still don't. Outside of Nairobi. Oh, just get out of Nairobi. They're there. Okay, maybe. I need but to get out of Nairobi. what they've done is that they don't really concentrate on the physical activity in the cyber cafe. Okay. They now have small Wi-Fi points and they serve a small area. Wow. So you, you, you will go to very deep in, um, uh, say, Riru or Ruai, and you find a, a single player, and he serves about 200 people wow. from there. But Maybe. they would buy connectivity from us. So probably the next time I host you on a show, I should be seated somewhere in Rwai. Exactly. And then I tap into the Wi-Fi exactly. station and we can stream it live. Exactly. Oh, fantastic. We'll just take a quick break. The market is just about to close. Look out for the closing bell and we'll be back shortly.